Hello primary 2 students, this is our final revision before our second term exam for the subject science. We will start with our very first topic, communication. Let's begin with the meaning of the word communication. Communication means sending and receiving a message. And in simpler words, that means that if I am saying, for example, that I like red and you heard me so i sent a message that i like red and you received it and now you know a new piece of information about me it, and that is that i like red so this is the meaning of the word communication sending and receiving information one person sends information and the other person receives it and now the second person knows it The second thing you need to know is the kind of communication, uh, whether it is one way or two way. So if I am talking to someone and this person is answering me back, so it's a conversation between two or more people and we are answering back to each other, I call this a two way communication. And just it doesn't just have to be by uh, talking, it can be uh, through texting or um, or emails or chatting or uh, talking on the phone so in all cases if two people or more are actively engaged and talking together I call this a two-way communication whereas one-way communication is if I uh, if one person sends a message and the other person gets it but they don't answer back they are unable to answer back uh, for example, if I'm watching TV, I get information from the TV, but I don't answer back to the TV. Same thing with the radio. Uh, same thing with the traffic light. I, when the traffic light is red, I understand I, and I get the message that I need to stop my car, but I don't send a message back to the traffic light. So this is a one-way communication. Other examples ex include the bell, the school bell, the doorbell the uh, <clears throat> the knocking on the door and uh, if someone says shh this these are all kinds of one-way communication so with that bit out of the way let's talk about some historical means of communication let's talk about the morse code so when they first invented electricity they tried to invent a machine that sends messages through the electrical wires and that's how they invented the telegraph. The telegraph was a genius way to send messages from one place to another faraway place but they couldn't make a language out of it. So what they did was that one of the scientists that uh, invented the telegraph called Morse, he made a code for each letter and that code sounds different from any other letter and when you send this code through the telegraph machine the person on the other side receives the exact same sound and they understand the letter that you are trying to send as i told you in class the people who uh, understand the morse code had to be trained for a long time and they had to be very special people so not everyone had a telegraph machine at home and not everyone understood how to translate the telegraph messages and not everyone of course understood the morse code um, so this is the morse code and what you need to know about braille is that uh, in france about 300 years ago there was a smart little boy called louis braille Louis Braille lost his sight at the age of three and he was very determined to learn. He wanted to learn everything and he couldn't see so he couldn't read. So he invented a way to read but not through his sense of sight or his sense of seeing. Uh, he wanted to use one of his other four senses that we know. So he thought the most logical one was the uh, touching so he made letters 
on uh, a paper but they were made in a special way so that the paper was bumpy with dots and when he touches them with his fingertips he could understand the letter that is written uh, so nowadays we use uh, this braille method to help people who cannot see or who can or, or who have uh, seeing problems read without the need of using the sense of seeing finally uh, we need to know that there are so many different kinds of communications so anything that sends a message basically is a kind of communication so if you are stuck on an island and you light a fire and the smoke reaches the uh, people who can rescue you this is a kind of communication if uh, you uh, say shh in a class that's a kind of communication if the referee uh, blows his whistle in a match and the players stop this is a kind of communication and the kinds of communication that we can hear to understand are called communication by sound and those like traffic lights where the different kind of light gives you uh, the message are called communication by light now let's move on to the next lesson moving on to the next chapter that is light now light sources are the objects that give us light such as the sun and the fire or any light bulb any lamp okay how does light reach us light reaches us through light rays and the most important thing we need to know about those light rays is that they travel in a straight line never in a curved line never in a zigzag line only one straight line just like an arrow all right so this is the first thing we need to know about light rays now because of this feature that it travels in a straight line it acts differently with different objects if i have an opaque object now opaque objects stop the light from passing through them if a light ray comes to an opaque object the opaque object stops it from passing through and as a result if i am standing on the other side of the light i am not going to be able to see anything for example if i am standing behind the door i can't see what's happening outside the room this is the first thing now the second thing is the transparent object transparent objects allow light to pass through them and that means that that if I'm standing behind the transparent object, I can see what's happening in front of me. So, for example, if I'm standing behind the window, I can see what's happening on the front of the window. Because the window is a transparent object and it allows light to pass through it. Last but not least, the mirror. Mirror objects have a special effect and when the light rays come to them, they reflect the light and as we uh, said in class when something starts with the word re it means it is going back or happening again so reflect means the light ray is going back and that's why when we are standing in front of the mirror we can see ourselves so again opaque objects block the light such as doors and walls and anything i can see through Transparent objects allow the light to pass, such as uh, glasses, windows, and uh, a glass cup. And mirror objects reflect the light. Now let's start with the lesson water. So the first thing we need to know is the sources of water. Uh, we can get water through different sources. The first one is the surface water and surface water means the water that I can see with my own eyes. So when I look the, at the place where water is, I can see the water clearly, such as rivers, lakes, um, seas. Uh, these are all sources of surface water and because I can see the water, because it is above the surface of the land, I call it surface water. Then we have groundwater and between us we can call it underground water and as the name says the water is under the ground so with your eyes you can see 
uh, just land you can just see the ground but the water is actually under the ground and you need to dig to get it that's why some people in some places of the world use wells to get the water uh, from under the ground rainwater is just the rain that falls from uh, the the sky <laughs> now uh, of course we can't drink water the way we get it from any source we need to clean it up first so we use a filter and the filter that we use at home is basically the same idea uh, we use uh, different things inside the filter to clean it up the first thing we use is gravel and gravel is like very small pebbles or stones the second thing is sand and the last thing we have is the filter paper and I told you that the filter paper is like the paper that uh, the people use in the coffee machine uh, gravel because it has big size it will remove bigger size dirt that you can see with your eyes in the water such as leaves papers or anything that is big it will get stuck on the uh, gravel and it will not pass through to the final water uh, sand removes medium sized dirt so maybe uh, smaller particles that will pass from the gravel will be stopped by the sand last thing is the filter paper the filter paper uh, has very very tiny tiny holes so they will make sure the water passes through as clean as possible uh, so even the sand and dust particles will not uh, pass through so the water comes out of there without any uh, dirt or impurities however if some kind of dirt is dissolved in the water it will pass so uh, and dissolved here means like if you put some sugar or salt in the water and then try to put it through a filter the filter will not be able to remove the salt or sugar if it is dissolved in the water yani the water is clear and you can't see the, uh, the salt or uh, sugar and then you put this water through the filter the filter will not be able to see the sugar or salt and it will not be able to remove it. just like the water colors that we had uh, in our experiment when the water was red it remained red because the food color is uh, dissolved in the water the filter can't see it so the filter couldn't remove it that's all you need to know for the lesson water now with the lesson weather and erosion weather is uh, how the day feels today how the air feels today uh, we uh, decide how the weather is by knowing about different things the first thing is temperature and temperature is how hot or cold the weather is when i know the temperature i know whether to wear a jacket or to wear light clothes if the temperature is high it means the weather is hot if the temperature is low it means the weather is cold of course and we know that through using a thermometer as i told you in the previous lessons uh, uh, the word meter at the end of any word means it's the tool i use to measure things so thermometer is a tool i use to measure temperature uh, and remember that temperature starts with a T and thermometer starts with a T as well. The second thing I want to know about the weather is the wind, the speed of the wind. And speed of the wind is how fast the air is moving around me. So if, the, if it's very windy, the, uh, the speed of the wind is very high. And if it's a nice cool breeze, the speed of the wind is kind of low. I'm going to know that by using a tool called an anemometer. Uh, we say anemometer, but anemometer so that you can remember the uh, how we say it slowly. Um, as we said, it's a tool, so it also ends with meter. The last thing we need to know is the rain. And of course, you know what the rain is. 
It is the water that uh, came out of seas and rivers and surface waters, uh, evaporated, reached the sky, and then cooled down in the sky and fell down as water drops. So this is all you need to know. Uh, now we are going to understand what the meaning of erosion is through this video. This is a picture that helps you understand erosion. All right, so if I have a mountain that looks like this, in the year 2000 and then uh, maybe 1000 years later in the year 3000 it looks like this all right what happened to the mountain is that the mountain got small how did it get small uh, if the mountain is made out of rocks here are the rocks okay what happened to these rocks the answer is that these rocks got removed one way or another. All right. When these rocks get removed, the shape of the mountain has changed. In this picture, it has gone smaller, but it can change in any way. It may just look different. And this is what I call erosion. Notice that the first thing is that the rocks were removed so the first thing i need to know is that something gets removed it gets moved out of its place and just gets removed forever the second thing is that it didn't happen overnight it didn't happen in one day it happened over a very long time and to say 1000 years uh, that's a very small amount of time compared to how long erosion actually takes it can take thousands or even millions of years So erosion happens due to natural forces. It has to happen due to natural forces. I can't say that breaking down a mountain with a tractor is erosion because a tractor is not a natural force. So the natural forces I can count on to cause erosion are either wind, so wind breaking down tiny bits of uh, rocks over a very long period of time, or water and water can come in different ways either it could be a waterfall or rainwater that removes very tiny bits of rocks uh, over a very long period of time last thing we need to know is the Nile aquatic ecosystem and ecosystem means a natural place with living things and non-living things in it. When I ask you whether a place is an ecosystem or not, you have to check that the place is number one, a natural place. Number two, I mentioned that there are living things and non-living things too. So if I say just living things, this is a wrong answer. All right, so examples of ecosystems are uh, forests, deserts, uh, rivers, oceans, but a zoo is not an ecosystem because it is not a natural place. A fish aquarium is not an ecosystem because it's not a natural place. Now that we understand the word ecosystem, let's move on to the word aquatic. And I told you to remember the word aqua means water, like aqua park is the water park. Aquatic means something that is related to water. So if I ask you, for example, about an aquatic animal, you can say fish. If I ask you about an aquatic ecosystem, means it has to be a natural place with uh, water related things in it. So, for example, a river is an aquatic ecosystem. A forest is not an aquatic ecosystem because it's not made of water. An aquarium is aquatic, but it's not an ecosystem because it's not natural. All right. Last thing we need to know are the animals of the Nile. Nile is the river that flows in Egypt. Um, we need to know some of the animals that live there, the special ones. The first one is the Nile, aquatic turtle. And the special thing about that turtle is that it has a soft shell. 
and it's big so we are used to turtles having hard shells but the one that lives in the Nile has a soft shell so that's the special thing about it the second animal we need to know about is the spiny eel and when you look at it for the first time you would think it's a snake but it's actually a fish that looks like a snake so the very important thing to remember about it is that it is a fish even though it looks like a snake Last thing we need to know is the crocodile that lives in the Nile. It is a very wild animal and it eats the animals that live in the Nile and the animals and birds that live around the Nile. Thank you and good luck on your